Good morning, friends. Blessings bang hanap mo? Come, join us in our morning devo. And together, let us enjoy the blessing that comes from the living God. Yes, halika. Samahan mo ako sa ating daily morning devotion ngayon. At sigurado ko, ang blessings ay mananagana sa umagang kay ganda. Salamat sa iyo, aking Panginoong Jesus. Ako'y inibig mo at inangking lubos. Ang tanging alay ko sa iyo aking ama ay buong buhay ko puso at kalunwa di na makaya ng maipagalong mamahaling hiyas o gintong sinukog ang naging dalangin o Diyos ay tanggapin ang tanging alay ko naway gamitin Ito lamang ama, wala nang iba pa Akong hinihiling Di ko akalain Na ako ay bigyang Pansin ang taong tulad ko di dapat mahalin ang tanging alay ko sa iyo aking ama ang buong buhay ko Puso at kalunwa Di na makaya ng Mahipagkalong Mamahaling hiyas O gintong sinukong Ang tanging dalangin O Diyos ay tanggapin Ang tanging alay ko Naway gamitin Ito lamang ama Wala nang iba pa Akong hinihiling Aking hinihintay Ang iyong pagbabalik Jesus, ang makapiling ka'y 
Nagala kang lubos Ang tanging alay ko sa aking ama Ay buong buhay ko Puso at kalunwa Di na makaya ng Maipagkalob Mamahaling hiyas O gintong sinukob Ang tanging dalangin O Diyos ay tanggapin Ang tanging alay ko Naway gamitin Ito lamang ama Wala nang iba pa Akong iniling Ang tanging alay ko Sa iyo aking ama Ay buong buhay ko Puso at kalunwa Di na makaya ng Maipagkalong Mamahaling hiyas O gintong sinuko Ang tanging dalangin O Diyos ay tanggapin Ang tanging alay ko Naway gamitin Ito lamang ama Wala nang iba pa Ito lamang ama, wala nang iba pa, akong inihiling. Ito lamang ama, wala nang iba pa, akong inihiling. Sa linggong ito mga kapatid, ang ating theme ay Stewardship of Treasure. Stewardship of Treasure. Paano tayo magiging katiwala ng mga pera at ari-arian na pinagkalaw sa atin ng Diyos? I titled this devotion with Everything is His. Sa kanya lahat ng mga to. Psalms 89.11 to 12a tells us, The heavens and the earth belong to you, and so does the world with all its people, because you created them and everything else. Mayroon akong nabasang kwento tungkol sa isang babae na nung matapos siyang mag-shopping, bumalik na siya sa kanyang sasakyan at doon nakita niya yung apat na lalaki na nasa loob ng sasakyan ibinaba niya yung kanyang shopping bag at inilabas niya yung kanyang maliit na baril may baril siyang hawak tinutok niya sa mga lalaki at sa malaking tinig sinabi niya mayroon akong baril at alam ko kung paano gamitin ito Layas kayo sa aking sasakyan. Ang mga lalaking ito, natakot. Kaya walang ano-ano, umalis sila sa sasakyan. Yung babae, syempre, nanginginig din siya sa nervyos at takot. Dali-dali niyang kinuha yung kanyang mga sinaping at ilalagay na niya sa sasakyan. Gusto niyang umalis ng mabilis. Pero kahit anong gawin niya, hindi magkasya yung susi sa ignition ng sasakyan. Hagang sa ma-realize niya, Teka, hindi pala itong aking sasakyan. Lumingon siya at nakita niya ng kanyang sasakyan ay nakaparke doon sa medyo malalayo pa ng konti. Around 4 to 5 spaces away. Dali-dali siyang luma, 
umalis sa sasakyan at tiningnan niya kung may mga nakakita sa kanya o kung yung mga lalaki na pinalayas niya ay nandun. At nung nakarating na siya sa kanyang sariling sasakyan, iniligay niya yung kanyang mga pinamili at pumunta sa police station. Gusto niyang isuko niyang kanyang sarili. Tinanong ng death sergeant kung ano yung kanyang kwento. At nung narinig nung desk sergeant yung kanyang kwento, halos mahulog siya sa kanyang upuan sa katatawa. Itinuro niya sa babaeng ito yung apat na lalaki na nandun sa malapit lang. Itong apat na lalaking ito, nag-report ng carjacking ng isang babae na may eyeglasses at medyo kulot ang buhok. At sabi nila, meron po siyang hawak na baril. Tumawa ng tumawa yung desk sergeant at lahat pa ng mga pulis na nandun. Alam nila na nagkamali yung babae. Nagkamali siya ng sasakyang sinusubukang buksan. At dahil doon, walang kasong naipila. Akala niya sasakyan niya ilon. Akala niya sasakyan niya ayon. Pero hindi pala sa kanya. Friends, ang katotohanan ay pag-aari ng Diyos ang lahat. God owns everything. He owns that lady's car and the one she mistakenly got into. And He owns everything we call ours. He owns it all. Psalms 24 verses 1 and 2 tells us, The earth and everything on it belong to the Lord. The world and its people belong to Him. The Lord plays it all on the oceans and the rivers. Ganon din sa Haggai chapter 2 verse 8. Sinabi niya, Ang mga pilak at ginto ay akin. Sabi ng Diyos. Sabi ni Yahweh. Maging sa bagong tipan, sinabi ni Pablo na, God not only owns the world and its wealth, but He owns us as well. 1 Corinthians 6.19 Do you know that your body is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. If you go to a hotel, you might give your luggage, your bag, to a bellboy or to a steward who will take it to your room. But, it is not his luggage. You entrust him with your suitcases and keep them for a short time. The basic principle of stewardship, friends, is that God, again, God owns everything. So what does that say about our relationship to the owner and the stuff entrusted to us? First, God is the owner and we are the managers. Everything we have today, friends, comes from God. It is God's. We own nothing. David said that the world and everything in it belongs to God. Psalm 89, 11. We are not the owner of the things in our life. As stewards, we are just the managers. If we believe we are the owners... We will be in constant conflict with God about what we do with the things we have. But when we understand that the Lord is the master and we are just the managers, the conflict disappears and freedom takes over our life. Now, let's take a test right here to make sure we all understand. Sige nga. Kapag mayroon tayong kita nung nakarang linggo na 4,000 pesos at pupunta tayo sa simbahan sa linggo, magkano bibigay natin sa Diyos mula sa 4,000 na yon? Lahat ba? Yung iba maaring sasabi nila, ah, 10% yung tithe, 400 pesos. Mga kapatid, prinsipyo ng tithing? Yes. 
maganda. The principle of fighting is good. However, alalahanin natin, lahat ng 4,000 na yon ay pag-aari ng Diyos. It's not just the tithe. Look at this question in 1 Corinthians 4, 7. For who makes you so superior? What do you have that you didn't receive? If in fact you did receive it, why do you boast as if you hadn't received it? The implied answer for the first two questions is nothing. And the answer to the third is I shouldn't. Deuteronomy 8, 17 to 18 cautions us. You may say to yourself, my power and my own ability have gained this wealth for me. But remember that the Lord your God gives you the power to gain wealth in order to confirm His covenant He swore to your fathers as it is today. Principle number two. As a manager, we have a divine responsibility. If God is the owner, then we are the managers whom He has trusted with His property. We must learn to think, therefore, like His managers. A manager oversees the owner's assets for the owner's benefit. A manager carries no sense of entitlement to the assets he or she manages. The job of a manager is to find out what the owner wants done with his assets and then to carry out his will. This understanding, friends, affect, affects how we give. Paano tayo magbigay? Let us give abundantly. King David, then the most powerful man on earth, understood this manager-owner relationship. After receiving a tremendous offering, David responded to God as recorded in 1 Chronicles 29.14. He said, But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? For everything comes from you and we have given you only what comes from your own hand. Friends, David was thinking like a steward, a manager, and not an owner. How do we give? We give sacrificially. In 2 Corinthians 8, Paul tells of Macedonian Christians and their sacrificial giving. Paul testifies here of the Macedonian believers. He wrote, We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God granted to the churches of Macedonia. During a severe testing by affliction, their abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed into the wealth of their generosity. I testify that on their own, according to their ability and beyond their ability, they beg us insistently for the privilege of sharing in the ministry to the saints. And not just as we had hoped. Instead, they gave themselves specially to the Lord, then to us by God's will. Wow! How could they give so generously while in extreme poverty? They didn't see poverty as an exemption from giving. They simply refused to miss out the satisfaction of giving sacrificially. How do we give? Let us give joyfully. Have you ever wondered why the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver in 2 Corinthians 9-7? Joyful giving is a sign that the givers understand the owner-manager relationship. Cheerful giving can only come from a heart set on things above, not on earthly things. Colossians 3-1 God loves a cheerful giver because such givers are investing in heaven, which reaps eternal dividends. When the tabernacle, remember, in the Old Testament was being built, people got so caught up in the joy of their heavenly investments that they had to be restrained from giving more. Pinipigilan na sila sa pagbibigay. Listen to this. 
Then all the craftsmen who were doing all the work for the sanctuary came one by one from the work they were doing and said to Moses, The people are bringing more than is needed for the construction of the work the Lord commanded to be done. After Moses gave an order, they sent a proclamation throughout the camp. Let no man or woman make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. So the people stopped. The materials were sufficient for them to do all the work. There was more than enough. Exodus 36, 4-7 Friends, Moses basically had to get up and cry out, Enough already! Tama na! Sobra-sobra na yung inyong binibigay! We give because everything is God's to begin with. The scriptures teach us both by mandate and model that we are to give abundantly, joyfully, and sacrificially. Finally, friends, the manager, God, will require us, managers, to give an accounting. We are held accountable to God because He as the owner has expectations of the manager. The owner has complete right to a full disclosure of what's been done with his property. Our managing his property will undergo a job performance evaluation. Romans 14.12 Every one of us then will have to give an account to God. Each will give a personal account to God. God will want to know what we have done with the possessions He has entrusted into our care. Here are a few reasons of inspection. First, ourselves. The owner will check how devoted we have been to Him. That's why Paul wrote in Romans 12.1, Therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. For this is your spiritual worship. Paul says, a proper and spiritual act of worship is to give yourself fully to your owner to be used as his servant. Second, our possessions. He will also hold us accountable for what we have done with the things he has entrusted to us. One of the final parables Jesus gave concerned a master who entrusted his possessions to three servants while he was away. Ito yung tinatawag natin na the parable of the talents. The master, after returning, held each servant responsible for how he had used or invested what had been entrusted to him. Next, our time. Look at Ephesians 5, 15, 17. Pay careful attention then to how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise making the most of the time because the days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Friends, we will be held accountable for how we use each day the Lord has made and given to us. Next, our abilities. The owner will examine what we have done with the gifts and abilities he had granted us. God, my owner, expects me to take the spiritual gifts and abilities He has handed me and use them for His glory. God has entrusted to my management, to our management, the time that we have, the possessions that we have, our abilities, and even our very being. All are used for His honor. We will be accountable for all these things and how we use them. God has high expectations that we will serve Him and grow to think and care and love like He does. In conclusion, my dear friends, if the examination were tonight, kung yung pagsusulit ay ngayong gabi, if we are to give our accountability tonight, if the owner called you to give an accounting this evening, what would the record say about your giving? Would it reflect a humble belief that you're only managing what he owns? Would joy and cheer mark your life as one who gives generously 
because you know your investment is gaining heavenly treasure for you? Some of us need to rethink how we're responding and how we're spending our resources for Christ and His kingdom. Yung babae sa kwento kanina was mistaken as she went to the wrong car. Will the dagon and send the passengers scurry. But hers was an honest mistake. It wasn't her car. And she wasn't held accountable for her actions. But we will be held accountable. All that we call ours is actually His. My prayer today, friends, is that we will that we do properly manage what He has entrusted to us. Once more, a blessed morning and God bless us all. Before we end, friends, I would like to greet our birthday celebrators today. Happy birthday to Juan Miguel Gonzalez, to Zelna De La Rosa, and I would like to greet an advanced happy wedding anniversary to my wife, Ruth. We'll be having our wedding anniversary tomorrow. My prayer is as you celebrate, as we celebrate, may God grant His overflowing blessing to us. May God grant His overflowing blessings to you who are celebrating your birthdays. May your prayers be answered. And may that be God's gift to you. Once more, happy birthday. And to Ruth, happy anniversary. Let us pray. We praise and thank you, dear God, Father, Son, and Spirit, for you are our God. God, who entrusted everything to us. Lord, everything we have is not ours. They are yours. Help us that we may be faithful stewards. Tulungan mo kami upang sa ganun ay maging mabuti kaming katiwala sa lahat ng mga pagpapala, sa lahat ng mga pinagkalumo sa amin. Pagdating ng aming pagsusulit sa iyong harapan, nawa Panginoon, marinig namin ang iyong tinig nagsasabing, Well done, my good and faithful manager. Well done, my good and faithful Steward, well done, my good and faithful child. Salamat po, salamat po sa pagpapaalala, salamat sa pagpapala. Sa ngalan mo, Kristo, itong aming panalangin, Amen at Amen. Muli, tanggapin natin ang pagpapala sa umagang kay ganda. God bless you all. Bye-bye.